welcome back to Football Daily. It's lovely to have you with me, Sam from Full Time Devils, Alex from the Sun Dream Team FC. We're here to talk about who's going to win the World Cup. So, there's four favourites, at least the bookies say that. And we're going to talk about Brazil, first of all. There's been quite an evolution for them over the last few years. Dunga onwards, they've been that pragmatic Samba side. Do you think that's going to win them the World Cup? I would love it if they did. It yeah. would be wonderful to watch. Mm-hmm. I think it will happen. I think Brazil are going to win it. I yeah. think they've got a, a decent goalkeeper, a cast iron defence, and a sort of actually pretty tough midfield as well. They've got a couple of players that can put the boot in. And then they've, they've got sort of flex of little players like, you know, Oscar, Hernanez, and then I think it's going to be Neymar's World Cup. I think I think he's going to smash it, yeah. Brazil weaknesses in certain areas. Most people identifying fullbacks. The fact they're so attacking. Is that really a... It is, but in years gone by, some of the most successful teams Brazil have had have always had that, but they haven't quite had the, the counteractive defensive midfielder. Yeah. Now they have sort of, you know, they've got Paulinho, Fernandinho, Fernandinho Ramirez. Yeah. They've got a few, yeah, Ramirez, a few Top players that... Not only are they more defensively minded, they also, if you watch Man City, they they can afford to play four four two with the IR Torre, who sort of will bomb upfield and won't bother tracking back because sure. Fernandinho covers so much ground. Sure, they're almost the reverse of what people typically think of a Brazilian football team, aren't they? Yeah. And that everybody just uh, through history, people just imagine Brazilian football teams extraordinary going forward, just yeah. all right at the back because it doesn't matter if they concede two, they're going to score four. Yeah. Whereas this Brazilian team is built on just a solid back four and brilliant defensive work and then they've got the players to go and get the goals mm. so I, I think they're very strong well that's what Scolari's good at isn't he he's good at getting that contrast between where Dunga went kind of very physical and, and actually quite cra- pragmatic Brazilian football and then the up- complete other Samba way and he's good at balancing the two it seems like he's really got the perfect mix of both Argentina are good aren't they they are uh, some people saying top heavy others say that's not true yeah, not me. I agree. I completely agree. Really? Some people do say it. I just think their individual attacking prowess they have, so Messi, Aguero, Higuain, Di Maria, whoever. Mascherano spraying it about. Exactly, yeah. They've got that balance up like to that point. Either. All those players are great. And then I think, I agree with the whole top heavy thing, um, centre-backs, they were leaking goals in the uh, qualifying. Mm-hmm. Leaking goals. So their solution was a last-ditch call-up for Martin Demichelis. Mm. And I think, you know, he's, it's not like he's got a f- world-class Vincent company alongside him to bail him out this time. If he does play, he's got <laughs> Gade and Campagnaro, I think, yeah. in the squad. So neither of those fil- would fill me with great confidence if is, I was Argentinian. Is it almost, though, that they are quite trendy in that sense at the moment? We'll outscore you. Uh, attack is the best form of defence. Do you think Messi will perform at this World Cup because he spent the last 12 months battling sort of niggling injuries mm-hmm. and his although his, his form for Barcelona has been hugely underrated like he still yeah. scored like like 30 league goals in 32 games or something like it's still ridiculous crazy for the yeah. number of minutes he spent on the pitch he it's, scored a lot of goals yeah it, it's still insane yeah but people have people have sort of said well he's not had a very good year but it's only by his own standards but coming ha, having battled fitness and stuff for mm-hmm. so, parts of the year Coming into World Cup, do you not think he'd rather have the summer off? I suppose it depends on how you pitch it, isn't it? Because if you say he's battled fitness for that time, then of course it's going to look tricky. But if you yeah. say he's been working up towards the World Cup, oh, building nice. himself up, you've got a completely flip side of yeah. that, right? And then you've got an Argentina side that are built around Messi, and yeah. e- even better, not only are they building weak players around Messi, they're building very strong players around Messi. So they've got a good centre of that, and everything around that is built really strong. So it's actually quite impressive that Argentina can take this team there, play some good football. I wonder if maybe they can mix all these different styles of play. Because you've got Messi, you've got Di Maria, you've got Aguero. Arguably, they're all quite considerate players, but at the same time, there's a directness about them that might not work at this World Cup. Before, they, they look like a more of a patient side, but the likes of Cambiasso in there, and you know you have maybe Hernan Crespo up front. Bit more guile. This is quite a direct team. And whilst that's trendy in Europe, I'm wondering if it's going to work at the World Cup. Well, they do, I suppose, have an advantage of being... They are, like, South American teams will win in South America. Sure. I think we all guess that. That's a great cliche. It is. Yeah. But it tends... It, it has proven true, yeah. like all cliches. Uh, and they don't have the pressure on them that Brazil do. So if there is a South American team that are going to take this tournament by the scruff of the neck and not think, oh, God, why won't everyone just leave us alone? Yeah. Mm. It's Argentina. If anything, they want to go and spoil the party, don't they? Yeah, yeah. it's ideal oh, for them, absolutely. isn't it? It'd be like the dream, the dream win for them. Yeah. Yeah. And also, I th- I'd be very surprised if by the end of the group stages, Argentina aren't 
nailed on and everyone's waxing lyrical. Really? Their but group I'd also is a be joke, surprised isn't it? if they want yeah, because their group they're gonna win they're every five nil. <laughs> they're gonna absolutely yeah. Who is it? So it's Iran Bosnia and Nigeria, Nigeria and Bosnia. Yeah. So it's gonna destroy it. I think they're gonna mm. blitz that group, everyone's gonna be they're amazing and then we'll really see if that sort of yeah. direct blowing people away style works. Talking about Germany, they're also one of the favourites, but they don't really have one man as the focus. And that's quite interesting, isn't it? Because a lot of people are saying, well, does that mean that when it gets to the hard moments, this German side's going to collapse like they did at the last Euros? Yeah, it's almost a, 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 an odd point to say, well, they haven't got a, a Neymar, a Messi, a, a Wayne Rooney, but they have got... That's maybe because they've got huge talent everywhere, but yeah. they're all they're all at that level. Yeah. Like, because mm. if, if you take Ronaldo out of Portugal, they've got Nanny. I mean, they are struggling big yeah. time, but Germany have just got talent everywhere. Yeah, and, and it's such a yeah. shame, though, that it, it speaks volumes about the strength they've got in depth, that Marco Royce can be injured yeah. from a World Cup squad, mm. and you look at the German team, and there are, really are quite a few people, like Draxler, Goetzer, that can sort of fill that void. Yeah. I love looking at the German midfield because all of those players are exciting, and I want. I'm looking forward to the German games. Yeah. And I hope, I hope, uh, I hope they turn it on. Yeah. They they are one of they're the team to beat in that group, really, aren't they? Yeah. And they they sit in a tricky group. Yeah. Ghana, USA, Portugal. That's a big detriment because I, generally I find teams they you sort of warm up to to the World Cup, don't yeah. you? So like Argentina, for example, have got a group that they can they can work their systems out, they can all get excited, they can get confidence, so that when they get into the next stages, they're yeah. full of energy and enthusiasm. Germany are gonna come out of this a little bit bruised. In in the deep they're end have to as work well against hard. Portugal. Yeah. Yeah. There there are a few doubts over this German team, and the doubt is in Germany that they aren't defensive enough, that they aren't maybe intelligent enough as a side they're very they well I think a lot of Germans think they're quite naive in playing this style of football all the time and not compromising is that going to be to their detriment or what have they learned from the Euros don't all jump <laughs> <laughs> no I think Germany I think Germany will be fine it's certainly in the group stages I think they're just a machine and they just get on with it and, and Lowe is going to play the way you know, he's, he isn't going to listen to any outside people saying, you know, what happened at the Euros or whatever. He's just going to get on with it. And I think Germany, they're going to be fine. The only thing I would sort of, they're sort of like the Spain in 2012 in that yeah. they've got closer as the only out and out striker. I know people yeah. will say, well, Muller plays there. But ultimately, for a proper out and out goal scorer, striker, He's the only one, and he's a 35-year-old. Yeah, not a deal, is uh, it? Let's talk about Spain, because that's a very strong squad, isn't it? Yeah, I think they're being, they're being ignored by everybody. I think just because people have moved on from possession football and tiki-taka, because like Bayern Munich this year got yeah. crushed, and Barcelona the year before. And I think there's a, a mindset that people have gone, well, that's not cool anymore, that's not going to work, because a couple of exceptional teams were able to beat it. But I think over a tournament, they could easily take this. They could win every game 1-0, playing their, their brand of football. But Iniesta himself said, if you think we haven't evolved as a team, then you're the ones who are being naive, not us. Yeah. They, they, know, they know they've got players in there that can exploit other systems. They know they've got players in there that can play a different style of football. They've got people like Pedro, and they, they've got options, have Man they? to man, they're surely the best team in this tournament. Tactically with Spain, it's quite interesting, isn't it? Because we've seen the evolution year after year under Del Bosque. They originally had that double pivot with Busquets and Alonso. Now they tend to have one holding midfielder, a couple of roaming guys. But it's m even further up front that the changes seem to be happening. They used to have Fabregas in that false nine, which worked a little bit. Now they actually have a striker. How well can they make that work? Depends if, I suppose, to a certain extent, I imagine they'll play him in their first game. But if he's not fit, there's no... If he's, I mean, even if he's... Even he is fit. He's had a very long season where he's been battling constantly with his own body. Yeah. He might not be ready for this World Cup. He could be totally drained. Mm -hmm. Play him one game. If he's not there for it, then they might revert to that. To completely flip it, at the back, they have the best defensive record of any of the challengers for this World Cup. Very impressive. In their last 19 competitive internationals, 13 clean sheets. That combination of PK and Ramos. I've Wait. always thought with those, uh, the records speak for themselves. You can't, you can't quibble with those. But I've always thought if you, if you... If you're watching Spain and you isolate one of those players, yeah. and you know you got like last season, uh, last year's Confederations Cup, and Neymar's running at PK, obviously no centre back wants that, but you do sense if you get them on their own and if you catch them on the break, you can sort of expose them yeah. quite readily. I think. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for watching, and of course, thanks to Sam and Alex. Let us know who you think is going to win the World Cup in the comments below, and our favourite comment will win this Brazuca ball.